Oh, hi. Uh, I was just uh, trying out some of Newton's laws of motion here. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today is Newton's three laws of motion. The first law of motion says that things at rest remain at rest. Things in motion remain in motion until acted upon by an outside force. So this golf ball here is going to sit there, and it will sit there until some force causes it to move. Once it's moving, it will continue in that direction at that speed until acted upon by some other force. Now, I know you're sitting there going, Mr. Harshfield, Mr. Harshfield, when I start a ball rolling, it's going to roll, but it's going to stop. It's going to curve, as you see this golf ball curving. So what's going on here? Well, this counter is not perfectly straight, perfectly level. If it was, I could start the ball here, roll it across the table, and it would continue rolling until acted upon by something else. That something else would be gravity. Now, why does it slow down? Well, there's another force that causes it to slow down. That's the force of friction. Friction is what resists motion, movement. And we call this ability to keep doing what it's doing inertia. Let's have a little demonstration here. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but that's part of science, right? So we've got a plastic bottle here. I'm going to put a business card on top of it, like so. And I've got a copper jacket uh, uh, bullet. I'm going to bounce it right there. Now then, what's going to happen if I flick the card? Well, the bullet has inertia. It's going to keep doing what it's doing until acted upon by another force. With the card there... We're involving Newton's third law, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But that bullet is being held up by the card. If the card's no longer there, guess what happens? Gravity. Gravity pulls it. And this will happen every time. And we can even put more weight on there so we have more inertia. Try another little something here. I've got a beaker, and I just put some paper towels in there to protect the glass from this. Set it there. Put this tube right there. And I'm going to put a golf ball right there. Make sure it's all lined up properly. Now then, you may have seen a magician do this. Magicians are simply using... Science. Got a broom here. I'm going to take and put the broom right here and step on the bristles so it makes kind of like a spring. And I'm going to adjust that just a little bit more. All right. So I'm stepping on the bristles. I pull back on the hem, handle of the broom. I'm going to let it go. It's going to fly up, hit this cardboard. So you guys might see this cardboard flying at you. Don't worry. It won't get you. One, two, three. Please note that the golf ball ended up in the beaker, just like I had planned it to be. So that's Newton's first law of motion. Things in motion continue do being in motion. Things at rest will stay at rest until acted upon by an outside force. Uh, my cat at home is a perfect example of this. She could be asleep. She's going to stay asleep until acted upon by an outside force. My coming up and petting her. That's going to cause her to wake up and she's going to move. All right. This little car here has a spring inside, and when I back it up like this, it winds up that spring, 
and causes it to move. But without that spring, that car's not going to move. It's not going to do anything. Newton's first law of motion. Newton's second law of motion says that force equals mass times acceleration. So the higher the mass, the faster the acceleration, the more force we're going to have to use to get it to do that. Also, we could adjust this so that we have um, acceleration equals force divided by mass. The faster we want something to go, the heavier it is, the more force we're going to have to apply to it. I have three different balls here. Golf ball, a handball, and a baseball. Which one of those three has the most mass? Not weight, mass. The difference between mass and weight is the effect of gravity. Mass is how much matter is contained in that object. Weight is the force of gravity pulling down on that object. So if I wanted to accelerate this golf ball, a little bit of force, and we'll start it rolling. The more force I put, the faster it's going to roll. If I take the handball, now the handball has more mass, so I'm going to have to apply more force to get it to move. The more force, the faster it's going to move. The baseball has even more mass. Come back here. Stay. So the baseball is going to take more force to get it to start to move. I told you stay. The faster I want that baseball to move, the more force I have to put. So if you're looking at a pitcher and he's throwing a fastball, he's putting a lot of force behind it. If he's throwing a slow ball, he's putting less force. Now then, having said all of that, let me come around here. I have over here a 16 pound bowling ball. Can you imagine the inertia that this has? How much force am I going to have to apply to this bowling ball to get it to start to move? Well, it's going to take quite a bit, bit compared to these others. And I'm going to try to get it to move. And I'm going to have to apply a lot of force to get it to move. A lot of force. Now then, we have this bowling ball. We have this golf ball. They are applying the same amount of force. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on? That bowling ball is continuing to roll in the same direction. Newton's first law. That golf ball is recoiling and rolling in the same direction as the golf ball or the, or the bowling ball. What's going on? This has less mass. This has more mass. This more force. This has less force. So when they collide, that force is transferred to the golf ball. Think of it this way. You want to go down the road in your car, and we'll say, just for sake of argument, you're in a little smart car. You want to get out on the highway, and you want to get up to 60 miles an hour. You push down the accelerator, the engine revs up, the car was going to move faster. Now, coming down the highway is a semi. That semi wants to get from a stop at the stoplight up to 60 miles an hour. It's going to take more force 
to move that semi and accelerate it to that same 60 miles an hour. So that's why if you get behind a semi and he's at a stop or he's speeding up, it, it may take him to get up to speed. So don't push him. That's also the reason that a semi needs more time to stop. Please, don't expect these semis to behave like a little sports car. It will not happen. Hmm. All right, so we've talked about Newton's first law, which says what? Yeah, it says that an object in motion will remain in motion until acted upon by an outside force. It says that a motion, an object at rest will remain at rest until acted upon by an outside force. Uh, I like to think of it this way. Things will keep doing what they're doing until acted upon. This bowling ball is going to keep rolling in that same direction at that same speed until acted upon by an outside force, just like this golf ball will, just like the baseball, the handball, ball, any other object. They can corral that thing so it doesn't roll away. All right. So, that's Newton's first law. Things keep doing what they're doing until acted upon by an outside force. Newton's second law says that the more mass, the faster you want to accelerate something, the more force you're going to have to apply. Um, yeah, oh, what, is, what exactly is acceleration? I'm sure everybody's saying, well, wait a minute, you're throwing all these fancy terms out at us. What is acceleration? Acceleration is simply the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Delta V, or change in velocity, divided by change in time. That will give you the instantaneous acceleration. We can also look at Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. We can adjust this, calcu or this equation so we can calculate the acceleration, we can find the mass, or we can find the force if we know the other two. So, having said all that, what, and let me say this, Newton was a brilliant scientist. He's considered to be one of the best and most intelligent classical physicists in history. Not Einstein. Einstein was a modern quantitative physicist. Newton was a classical physicist. The difference is that Newton dealt with the natural, um, nat natural world as he saw it. He dealt with light, he dealt with motion, he found the equation for universal gravity. And it's because of his equations, which have been verified, that we can send men into space, we can put satellites into space, we have been to the moon and back. Now, that brings up the third, law, third of Newton's three laws of motion. For every action... There is an equal and opposite reaction, which means when I push on this counter, I push down with a certain amount of force. It's pushing back with the same amount of force. When I push on this board, it's pushing back with the same amount of force. And that's great. That explains how a plane flies. That explains a baseball. Think about when you have a baseball coming at you and you're the batter and you hit the ball, action, reaction. The bat hitting the ball is the action. The ball flying off is the reaction. Now, wait a minute. You said without this third law, we would not have been able to put men in space. Well, how does a rocket work? What do you think? Any ideas? Hmm. Well, we know that a rocket is going to expel gases 
flames force downward. But what does that mean for the rocket? How does that mean the rocket takes off? That is the reaction, the force being pushed down. The reaction is the rocket being pushed up. Now, here's the thing. As the rocket uses up its fuel, its mass is going to decrease. So the acceleration will increase, keeping the force the same. The force is the same when it takes off as it is when it reaches orbit by this equation right here. Uh, another thing that Newton did, and I know a lot of people that are upset about this, is he developed the idea of calculus. Oh yeah, calculus. But getting back to the rocket, we said that the rocket pushes out exhaust, the motion is going to push the rocket up, and we can show that by a simple balloon. Uh, this balloon has air, if you've seen me blow it up, if I release this, that air is going to be pushed, going to be pushed out. That's the action. The balloon flying off in this direction is the reaction. Fun and games, science. So, uh, um, that's Newton's three laws of motion. Things continue doing what they're doing until acted upon by a force. The amount of force is going to equal the mass times the acceleration that we want to achieve. It is, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The school principal just walked in. I'm going to get him involved here. Mr. Osborne, um, as a principal, do you ever have any reactions to anything that you might do? Uh, yeah, most often. <laughs> That's the psychological action-reaction pair. Yeah. Uh, you missed this. Let's see if we can do this again. Would you hand me that cardboard right there, please, and the plastic tube? Thank you. Now, I shouldn't be doing, doing this because this reveals the magician's secrets, and I'm sworn to secrecy on that. But I will tell you, magicians simply use science in their everyday thing. All right. So, again, I've got a broom here, straw bristles. They tend to work the best. I'm going to set it right here. Pull this back. Now, I'm stepping on the bristles. So it's going to act like a spring. There it is. Dropped it into the beaker. And it will work every single time because of inertia. Newton's first law. Things keep doing what they're doing until acted upon by an outside force. What about friction? Friction. Explain something about friction. Slow down. All right, what is friction? Friction is a force between objects. There's friction between this ball and the tabletop. That friction is where the surfaces meet and it's going to resist movement. And so you've always heard, or at least I think you've heard, that you cannot create or destroy energy. There's some energy in moving this ball. That's part of the force. That friction is taking some of that energy and converting it into heat. Put your hands together and rub them real fast. And what do you experience? What does it feel like? It gets hot. That's the friction being rubbed in between your hands. So that's friction. 
It's the force that resists movement. That's the reason a ball will slow down. That's the reason a ball will turn and curve because of friction acting on it in an unequal manner. Um, what else? Do you have any questions? Anything else? Uh, I will tell you this. Just please, 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 if you want to do this at home, um, have your parents get a broom for you. Don't use your mom's good broom. They will. She tends to get a little testy about it because some of the bristles will be broken in this and you may want to use uh, a golf ball if you do put some paper towels in the glass that you're dropping it into so it doesn't break the glass um, i've seen people do this with a raw egg and what they will do is they'll put water in here and use that to collect the egg protect the glass from the egg uh, so, Newton's three laws. Once again, things that rest or things will continue doing what they're doing until acted upon by a force. Force equals mass times acceleration. The more mass, the same amount of acceleration will create more fo force. And we have for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So go out and try this, and remember that action-reaction is part of how a plane flies. You might want to try that. Go out and hit, if you go out in the backyard and hit a baseball, remember the bat hitting the ball is the action. The ball flying away is the reaction. Is there, is there an example of an everyday occurrence that you could use the formula, like the figure, like the force of something? You had like the mass of a car, acceleration. Sure. The cars, or you showed the people at home, maybe how, just an example of that. Well, as an example, force equals mass times acceleration. All right, so we have the mass of a smart car. And just for the sake of arguments, I'm going to say 2,000 pounds. We want to accelerate it to, I don't know, maybe 35 miles an hour. So we are going to generate a force of about 6,000 newtons. Now then, if we have a semi, that semi is going to be somewhere around 40,000 pounds. And we want to accelerate that to three, 30 miles an hour. We're going to generate a force of that. Can you imagine how much force that would cause, how much damage that would cause if that semi ran into your little smart car? That's the reason why. Yes. And my dad was a semi driver, so I learned a lot about this. And once again, don't expect a semi unloaded to be able to react the same way as a little sports car. So is that, is that the reason why uh, folks have a, a harder time stopping? Yes. Remember, all right, that is the reason trucks have a harder time stopping than a car. Remember, the more mass you have, the more force it's going to take. So in this case, we're trying to stop. Acceleration is going to be negative, so the force is going to be negative. But we've got this semi, we've got this little smart car. They run together. Guess what? That little smart car is going to be demolished. Yeah, one 
One minute. All right. So just as a second or third or fifth review, Newton's three laws of motion. Things keep doing what they're doing until acted upon by an outside force. It's going to give me problems. All right. Number two. The force needed to accelerate an object to a certain velocity is dependent upon the mass of that object, excuse me, and the acceleration that we want to achieve. Third, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you push on something, that object is going to push back with the same amount of force. All right. So, thank you for being with me, and I hope to see you again next time.